Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most powerful ARM-based single board computers that I've ever taken a look at on this channel. This is known as the Enforce 6560. It's by Smart Wireless Computing and they're formerly known as Enforce Computing. Now this board is actually powered by a Snapdragon CPU. Along with the board, I also received a power supply here. 12 volts, 3 amps, but I'm going to tell you right now that this is a very low powered board and this is a little overkill just for the board itself, but with connected peripherals you may need that extra amperage and I believe that's why they include that 12 volt 3 amp power supply. So like I mentioned, this is powered by a Snapdragon CPU, it's actually the Snapdragon 660 and as you can see the board itself does have a little acrylic plate on the bottom just to keep it up off of the table or wherever you want to mount it. And right now, as the board sits, we have the ability to run Android on this unit, but Smart Wireless Computing is working on a Debian build, which I'm really hoping to get my hands on soon so we can take a look at that. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at their Android 8.1 build that they have available right now. And I can tell you, when it comes to ARM-based single board computers, this is definitely one of the best performers that I've ever tested on my channel. As form factor goes, it is a bit bigger than the Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see, on the right-hand side, we have the Raspberry Pi 4. On the left-hand side, we have the Enforce 6450. It's not a lot bigger than the Raspberry Pi 4, but it definitely has a much larger footprint. And when it comes to built-in I.O., the Raspberry Pi 4 does have this beat out, but that's not to say we can't add more I.O. to this unit down the road with adapters and things like that. So real quick, let's take a look at the board. From the left to the right, we have a 3.5mm audio jack, our 5.5mm power input, full-size HDMI, and USB 3.1. Ethernet is optional on this unit. It can be soldered on from the factory. And over here on this side, we have a USB Type-C port. Now, like I mentioned, this board was not specifically designed for media consumption or gaming, but we're definitely going to be getting into that in this video. But when it comes down to it, this board was designed for many in-home and industrial use case scenarios. It has a dual Spectra 160 ISP built-in, and this will support up to two 21 megapixel cameras from the CSI ports, Qualcomm's neural network processing engine, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, GPS, and it also has that Hexagon Digital Signal Processor, or DSP, to enable image, sensor, and audio processing. So this was really designed and can be used for facial recognition, artificial intelligence, and there's just a plethora of things that can be done with this, like connected camera solutions, machine learning, robotics controllers, home surveillance, signage, it can run AI SDKs, it can be used for audio and video gear. I mean, the sky is really the limit when it comes down to a board with this many features built in and the power this thing puts out. And Smart Wireless Computing actually has a few other Snapdragon-based single board computers and different dev kits that you can check out over on their website. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But in this video, we're taking a look at the 6560, powered by the Snapdragon 660 CPU. It's an 8-core CPU with 4 cores running at 2.2 GHz and 4 more running at 1.8. It's got that Qualcomm 680 DSP built-in. The GPU is the Arduino 512. It does support Vulkan and OpenGL 3.2. And in this build of Android 8.1 we'll be taking a look at, Vulkan is enabled. 3 GB of DDR4. It has 32 GB of eMMC storage soldered right to the board. But it also has support for USB storage and a micro SD card slot. Built-in 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. And like I mentioned, right now we have a build of Android 8.1 to take a look at, but Debian is in the works. And I think a board like this would be absolutely amazing running a Linux desktop operating system like Debian or other builds that could be ported over to something like this. Alright, so here we are, running the build of Android 8.1. I've just plugged this into my game capture so we could get a better look at it. Now this does not come pre-installed with Google Play, so you will have to install a third-party app store like Aptoid, and there's tons of other ones out there, but I've personally used Aptoid in the past and I've had good luck with it. So let's go ahead and open up IDA64. I've side-loaded this from Aptoid. As you can see, we have that SMD660, 3 gigs of DDR4 RAM, Snapdragon 660 CPU, Arduino 518, does support OpenGL 3.2 and Vulkan, and we're running Android 8.1, but it is an older security patch, and hopefully they do bring a newer version of Android over to this board. Android 10 or 11 would be amazing. Straight out of the box when you install this operating system, or if it comes pre-installed on the board, then you will get a few different Qualcomm applications. There's a few update applications, power manager and things like that. Plus we have this Qualcomm update application. We can update from local storage from USB or SD. Unfortunately, it doesn't fetch anything from online to update. And by the way, this board does work with touchscreens over USB or MIPI. 
Now, if you did pick something like this up for media consumption or gaming, just note that we don't have Google Play installed, so we don't have Google services. You will have to kind of sideload your apps. But if you want to get something like YouTube, you can always use YouTube Vanced or Vanced YouTube. It comes with its own Micro G package. And when it comes to video playback on this board with that Snapdragon 660, it's absolutely amazing. With this application that I'm using here, I can only go up to 1080p, but we'll check out some 4K in a second from Plex. It will handle it just fine. 720, 1080, and 4K 60. So moving over to Plex, we'll test something a little harder to run here. 4K, 60 FPS, 78 megabits per second. Just give it a second to buffer out, and this should play just fine, even at that high bit rate. Got a little bit of weirdness going up in the top left-hand corner, but I've noticed that when I start up. As you can see, it's playing it perfectly smoothly. 60 FPS, 4K, 78 megabits per second. This little chip will definitely handle 4K video playback. I also ran a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 335, multi, 1399. Keep in mind, this is Geekbench 5, so the scores do look a little lower, but this is really great for a single board computer like this. Next up, we have 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme, OpenGL 3.1, total score 1356. Was hoping to see a little bit of a higher score here, but uh, overall, I think it's doing a decent job. And finally, Antutu, total score 152,773. Now, if you were to compare this to newer Android devices, this is definitely on the lower side, but when it comes to the single board computer market, one of the highest scores that I've seen in Antutu running Android on an ARM-based board. Moving over to some native Android gaming. I mean, basically, as long as you can download it and install it on this board, it's gonna be able to play it at full speed. Some higher end games, you might have to drop the settings down to medium, but for the most part, running 3D games on this board should work out really well. And just to give you an idea of that, here we have PUBG. It's a bit hard to play this with a keyboard and mouse the way it's set up on a mobile device, but uh, it runs great. And I do have the frame rate set to high, where at medium settings, I'd say this is fully playable. Moving over to emulation, first up we have PSP using PPSSPP, Tekken 6, Vulcan backend, 3x, no hacks, no frame skip on, it's running perfectly fine. Even the harder to run stuff like Chains of Olympus works great at 2x with no hacks and no frame skip. Taking a look at Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator, DOA2, one of the harder games to emulate in my opinion on ARM devices, we're running at full speed. Now unfortunately, since I don't have Google Play installed or Google services, I cannot activate my purchase of ReDream from the Google Play Store, so I can't upscale. We're sitting at the native resolution, but the way it's looking right now, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to go up to at least 1280 by 960. And finally here, the Dolphin Emulator. I've tried OpenGL, i tried Vulkan, unfortunately we just don't have enough power to push this emulator. And you know, I've tried everything that I could to get this to run at full speed. It's trying to get there, but even with the easier to emulate games like Wind Waker, we're still going to run into some lag issues. I just can't get this to run at full speed with Vulkan or OpenGL. When the Debian build is available, I will be coming back to this emulator inside of Debian and maybe we can get some better performance out of it. But like it sits right now on Android, as you can see, it's pretty hard pressed to run these GameCube games. And when it comes to power consumption, I was really surprised by this because they do include that 12 volt 3 amp power supply which should do about 36 watts. At idle, we only managed to pull 2.4 watts from the wall, I'm using a kilowatt meter, 4K video playback, 4.6, and when maxing out the CPU and GPU simultaneously using a stress test, it only pulled a maximum of 6.7 watts. Now given I don't have any cameras or hard drives plugged into this unit, but the way it's looking right now, this is a very low-powered ARM-based single board computer given the performance we're getting out of this unit. 
So yeah, it's definitely a great performing single board computer. It's actually one of the best that I've tested on my channel when it comes to ARM based single board computers. I'm not talking about x86 or phones or anything like that. As a single board computer, this is definitely a powerhouse, but it does come out of price because the Enforce 6560 is actually $220. They offer a few different Snapdragon variant single board computers over on the website, ranging from the Snapdragon 410, 450, 660, which we've taken a look at in this video, and even a Snapdragon 820 powered single board computer. So you will be paying a premium for a board like this, but personally, I just can't wait to get my hands on the Debian build for this. Really hoping for a nice little desktop experience out of this board, and I will keep you posted as soon as I can get my hands on it. I'll install it and do a video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Enforce 6560, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.